So this is going to be an ultra lightning talk. Instead of 20 minutes, it's going to be 10 minutes. And the reason I'm here today is to talk about making payments better. The reason why I came here is because they usually make me very angry as a user. So I'm hoping that we can do something about this. First important fact, the average shopping cart abandonment rate is 68%. It's mostly due to the checkout process. What does it mean in dollars? Well, $4 trillion. According to business intelligence specialists, they have projected that 63% of that amount is potentially recoverable. So that means we are doing something wrong in terms of the checkout process. So why are, why are people giving up? Well, maybe they're not ready to buy. Maybe there is no coupon. Or sometimes you put something in the cart, figure out the shipping is actually almost as much as the product you're trying to buy. Or sometimes the UX is just so horrible, you don't feel like making it through. You already have enough with your day. And sometimes you have to create an account and you just want to buy one thing, be done with it, never come back. And they are forcing you to spend an extra five to 10 minutes. Another big one is payment security concerns. Um, we always think that it's okay, but um, if you don't have the little security signs, it's a problem and it scares people. So quickly, the anatomy of a checkout process is the login or the guest checkout, the cart page, billing and shipping page, the payment page, and the summary and confirmation page, and the email that goes with it. So since we don't have that much time, I'm just going to be skipping over some of the parts and getting to the interesting stuff. Um, keep in mind, make registration always look optional. Make it easy to sign up, yes, but don't force it. The cart page, be smart about it as well. Help me as a user add, remove, review everything that I put in my cart. Give me a visual cue. If it's medicine like this, it's not really worth it to make big images, but if it's clothing, uh, go for it, you can. The other thing is actually be smart about the wish list and the save for later, because then it shows intent. People can come back and check out later, but you also gain information as to what they didn't buy right now, and you can help it make it worth their while later by offering a coupon or getting in touch with them saying, hey, we also have these new products. For billing and shipping, um, it's mostly a question of being smart. Offer multiple payment options so people won't actually be turned off. If you don't want to use credit cards online, and you don't have a PayPal option, eh, you're probably not going to buy. Uh, the other thing is, make it easy. Shipping and billing should be auto-filled if it makes sense. As for payment, once again, be smart. Don't ask me for the card type. You can figure it out on your own. You're smart enough. The security icons, and these are the little things we don't notice until we realize they're gone and then we're wondering where we're putting our um, information. When it comes to the summary and confirmation page, well, it's a great way to give extra information and actually communicate like a normal human to one of your customers. So this is where you can actually try to catch them back to sign up or tell them, hey, these are our contact details if you have any questions. Now, for the stuff I really, really wanted to talk about. Forms, save your users time and effort. Pre-fill the stuff, don't ask for the things sales wanted, the things accounting wanted, the things that marketing wanted. Ask what you need to make that sale, period. So that means don't ask me about my city, don't ask me about my state, for example, if I'm in the US or in Canada. You can't get that information from the zip code. Prefill makes it so easy. The other thing is, for credit card forms, use smart error notification. Um, it saves a lot of friction. Tell me where I went wrong. Sometimes I'm actually distracted and I will put in my cell phone number instead of the credit card. It obviously doesn't fit, so just make it move. Catch my eye. Tell me something. It avoids friction of, the friction of me pushing OK and then wondering, what the heck did I do wrong again? Use input masks. It really helps a lot as well in the experience. And offer card scanning options. So when it comes to payment info, Using smart error notification kind of looks like this. From a user standpoint, you will see that it will catch your eye. It's moving. Our eye is trained to look out for movement. So this actually works quite well. If you want to see it in detail, you can go to this URL. For the card scanning options, well, you can see a card.io does something really great. You put your card in front of your phone, you take the picture, and then the information gets passed on. 
This is actually really nice for me because I have a tendency to not see the last four numbers on my credit card because this little silver thing just went off and my card is black and the numbers are black, so I always make that error. This would help me avoid it. And now for my next magical trick. How to validate a credit card number with your mind. So um, beyond this, we're just talking about Lund's algorithm. It's a checksum algorithm and it helps you figure out if the credit card number is valid or not. So it's a simple calculation that you can put into place and you don't have to ask people for a number, force them to click OK and then tell them, by the way, it doesn't go through for some reason. You can be proactive about this. You can also limit the numbers. Now that you know which card has, has which number, it's very easy to do. And if you want to take this one step further, I really, really like this option. It's one line of code. You can add it to your existing forms. And as you can see, you put in the four, automatically fills out to be Visa. I confirm that it is my card. But what's really great as well is that once we get to the dreaded security code that people keep trying to teach you where it is on each card and keeps changing, well, it turns around and it shows you exactly where you're inputting the things. So as a user, you're like, my card, browser, my card, good, let's go. Um, and it's great because it has CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, no images. So people that have accessibility issues can still see this. When, what I mean by see, they can still interpret this with their assistive technology if they need to. Oh, and it's free. Another way to look at this is also um, thinking about progressively enhancing credit card input. How? Well, as you've seen, I start filling it out and it actually tells me no need for spaces, no need for dashes, no need for anything. It's instinctive. As a user, I know that I'm on the right path. If you want more information, you can go on the link to see this. And last but not least, mobile, because mobile Ecom is actually gaining a lot of traction, and somehow it still feels like it's a little bit um, not loved. So how can you make the experience better? Avoid long scrolling lines. I, I'm not going through the Bible. I just want to choose a few pieces of information and move on. Show appropriate keyboard layouts. So if you go to mobile input types, you'll see a few of them. And some of the ones that are really pertinent are using calendar view with dates. Using the email input type, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people just complain about this, and I do it as well. If you don't give me the at and the dot com or the dot something, just a regular keyboard, I have to just shuffle back and forth, and it's just not nice. Using the numerical for credit card info is the same problem. I don't need letters, I need numbers. Please make it easy on me. I know that there are some issues with certain browsers. You can check it up, you can force input types if you have an issue that you detect. Another neat trick, at least for me, is disabling autocorrect when it's logical. If I'm typing my street name, I don't want you to autocorrect it to a word that has meaning in the dictionary. I just want my street name, and I don't want to do this three times in a row until you're convinced that it's the right street. And that about covers it, so I should be on time. This was an ultra lightning talk. My aim was really, really to make this easy to understand so you can catch certain mistakes when you are faced with making checkout pages. And these are things that everybody knows, but we somehow keep forgetting. So I hope this was useful to you, and um, thank you very much. <laughs>